Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Take Two. A great season finale. So, for one, we're immediately picking off where last uh, week's episode ended off with Sam and Eddie going back to his place and doing their thing, which is kind of interesting. I love that we immediately pick up with that because I was like, I thought like, oh, there'd be a little weirdness and awkwardness between them going forward, which it does, but it didn't go down the way I thought. I didn't know it was like, oh, we're making it out there, which once again, let's not forget that's in front of the thief lady that he was kind of getting all flirtatious with. And that was also in front of Troy last episode. But nevertheless, it's just kind of like went back to their place and immediately did that. I wasn't expecting that because it's like, Oh, they've been fighting it for so long that they kind of be in, into each other. So I thought it still would have been awkwardness at work, which now the edit awkwardness to it is like, well, now not only have we kissed and made out hardcore, we've done way more. And on top of that, everybody knows. Berto and Monica could tell immediately. Chris happens to show up in time to see what happens. Him, um, Sam kind of getting dressed up and she's like, yo, do you want me to give you a little more time? He's like, just wait, go, go meet, wait for me at the gym. I'll, I'll meet up with you there. So, and I thought, I thought it was kind of cute for them to be like, so like, okay, where do we go from here? Cause it's like, uh, things, you know, she's, Sam's talking about her experience with being caught with like having a relationship with colleagues. It kind of gets weird and awkward. And they're kind of like, no, 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 nothing has to change between us. It's like, yeah, maybe we just got that out of our system. But everyone's kind of pointing out, at least, you know, to Eddie, it's like, no, this is good for you. Even Chris is like, and that was kind of an interesting thing. She was like, yeah, the thing between us was always meant to be a, a temporary thing until one of us found something special, something important. It's like, and Sam's that important thing. Cause you thought it should be a hassle to have be part of your team and everything. And it turns out, no, that's not the case at all. Like it's grown into something amazing. Like you've been better. Everything around you has been better. And now like there's this added bonus of it. So if there is something here, don't fight it. Don't try and push it away and pretend, make it seem like it is nothing. Like obviously it means something. So go for it with it, you know? Um, she talks to him about Sid. Cause we don't, still don't 100% know what Sid and Eddie's relationship is like. We know a little bit from the beginning of the series, but that's about it. So beyond that, you know, it kind of seems like things didn't necessarily end well between them, but Sid's just kind of like, eh, you do whatever you need to. The fact of the matter is I slept with Eddie, so it's not like I could be much of a judge in all the situation. But then becomes a whole situation. I think the episode did a very nice job because, well, for one, many different things that go down. For one, we have Emily Rose popping up in the show, which I got so giddy. I saw her name. Oh, yeah, Emily Rose, which obviously things you like I best know her from is like, you know, playing um, Audrey Parker from Haven as well as playing Elena in the Uncharted, you know, video game, video game. I don't know why I said it like that video game series. So I just get so giddy. I was like, ah, Emily Rose, that's so cool. And she's playing a character named Emily too. Basically, she was from a very wealthy business and she makes a lot of money and she was engaged to some dude who turned out to be a car art, um, con artist. I'm slurring my words today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, his real name is uh, Jessup, it turns out. That actor, too, I've seen him in plenty of things, too. I just, I'm just i blanking on his name right now. Uh, but it was like this long thing, like trying is a con to get the con man, which like I love that being a part of the episode to the constant back and forth. Interesting enough, just kind of a little side note. It's also the actor who plays Hal. Once again, he's just in a lot of things. Hal from Riverdale uh, was in this too. I was, I was like, oh, the fact that they got you, maybe you're playing a bigger role. It's like, nope, you pop up in like one scene. But nevertheless, um, it is a situation of like the flirtatious nature between Eddie and Sam. It's like it's kind of like oh, like we're flirty, but we shouldn't be. It's like oh, we're getting all close and pressed against each other and then later on it's just kind of like they lean into it more like especially when she's undercover it's like oh the single blonde that kind of lure Jessup in that kind of caught me off guard the fact is that um they're just like getting all like they're like all hot and steamy about it and just like their words and stuff and it's just like holy crap it's like the whole like oh we're gonna push put it like pull back away from this situation and now now when it comes down to this you're like oh no we're we're leaning into it even more it's kind of crazy to me you know so it turns out that Jessup was shot because he was shot by a sniper because it turns out he hadn't just done this to one person. He's done it to many people because it turns out the connection between this, you know, is the fact is that he ended up stealing from a mob boss's daughter like because he got close to her and then just robbed her blind which is like that was stupid on his part maybe at the time he didn't realize that he was kind of closing in on a mob family maybe because he's a con artist he he thought hey, I'm, I'm so good i'm so careful i can get away from it because uh, like 
Because he started flipping out in the moment Sam found his key, and it's like, oh, good, that's why. Because it's like, if he turn, returned all of, like, Emily's stuff, then it's like, okay, well, they'll just let him go, because they were coming after him about Emily's stuff, not everyone else's stuff. Plus, they weren't cops, too, so it's like, as long as they kept the cops out of it, he would have been fine. That's So that was what he was, like, because I was wondering, like, was he trying to get out of town quicker? I mean, maybe that played a role in it. Maybe he knew that, well, like, if you were trying to get out of town, you would get out of town. You wouldn't just be around there, like, chilling and going to a poker game and everything. I was also like that aspect of like oh yeah ben got me into the game she's like he and eddie's like ben and she's like you know just an actor friend you know he recently played so and so super like kind of referencing him playing a superhero and eddie's just like you know not dropping a name is almost worse than actually dropping a name which is just like yeah you just subtly throwing it in there we can all assume she's referencing ben Affleck. it took me a bit i was like ben ben i was like all right most recent ben playing a superhero is ben, you know ben Affleck. so nevertheless i thought that was kind of nice but um the case goes even deeper than just the whole uh, Jessup thing because it turns out there's a connection to eddie and that is marnie uh she's the lady the witness in particular that Eddie failed to protect that died like three years ago. It seems like the killer, the shooter who killed Jessup is the same person who shot Marnie, which is interesting because I let that slip my mind. Like that was an element that was brought up early in the season about like his past, about like, oh, like the one time he felt like he couldn't do his job. And it's like because him and Mar Marnie was more to him than that. But this whole situation complicates things because it's like, you know, you have Sam telling him like the back down. Chris is telling him the back down because he's getting too emotional. And it's like you're playing into this because, you know, Deacon showed up, which I I was I was like because I had a feeling I was like, OK, the finale season finale is going to have something to do with Deacon but it's like oh I guess it didn't really cross my mind and then he showed up at a poker game I was like okay that's no coincidence he's like oh I don't know what you're here for but I don't care which is like I'm assuming with everything kind of going down the way it did in the episode it's like he definitely knew what you were doing but it's just kind of like Eddie was just in such a mode he wasn't willing to really listen or pay attention to anything because it turns out the person who recommended Sam and Eddie for the job was uh, Deacon's sister which is kind of like huh is she just kind of because he even made subtle threats. He's like, you know, it's like, oh, like, the reason why I'm invited to this poker game is because everyone thinks, you know, I'm an alleged crime boss. And who doesn't want to be the one to walk around like, oh, yeah, I played cars or shook hands with an alleged crime boss, you know. It's like, I'll be seeing you around, Sam, you know. And so it's like, yeah, that definitely wasn't good. I don't know if they actually even told Chris that Deacon was at the game. Maybe they did. But I mean, it's like, at this point, there's like nothing they can do about it. Uh, but ne nevertheless... But Eddie's not really thinking straight to the point that he even kidnapped a mobster like muscle dude named Jimmy. Uh, he's, he works for uh, he works part of like, like I said, this whole mob situation, which is interesting. But the mob dude like Jimmy was very forthcoming with information because he sees that this was personal for um, Eddie. It's like, yeah, we hired this dude, but we're not we, we're not in the business. Like we only went after this dude just because he screwed us over and stuff like that. That Marnie woman, we can tell I can tell this is important to you. So it's like, oh, that's very nice that you gave up the information. But in retrospect, it's like, well, to be fair, because Sam ends up finding it out because Chris helps him find out. The fact is that the mobster family that he's connected to is pretty tight with Deacon. I, at the very least, they kind of work under him. So it's like, okay, so he gave that information most likely voluntarily just to, for this whole setup with um Eddie. Eddie found the hitman behind this, Carl, and then goes to his place, confronts him, but the place blows up and all the evidence is going to, so they have to let him go. I thought Eddie had something a little more planned. Like, for one, like, the whole blowing up at Sam thing, I was like, is he legitimately being emotional or is he trying to push her away? I mean, in general, I think it's when people get emotional, that's when you push people away, but that's when people need to be there the most for you, which is what Sam never wanted to give us. She's like, no, 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 I'm gonna be there for him because it's like, Eddie blames himself for something that wasn't his fault. It was just, you know, you couldn't have prevented something like that because as we can see like they had eyes on her the entire time they were just waiting for the perfect moment to strike but for him it's like i let down my guard i let you know and i think that's probably even more you know he definitely brings it up later on that's why he kind of doesn't let his feelings show because they have a tendency to kind of slip from under his control so he tries not to give into his feelings so that's probably why you know even more so reason why he kept this in oh him and sam thing kind of like he kind of bottled that up even more why he's kind of like was reluctant too because he's afraid to take those steps forward, especially considering like when it came to his last love life. At the very, I mean, we don't know if there's been anyone subsequently since Marnie. I mean, there's the whole Chris thing, but still, like Marnie is kind of like 
you know, it's it's a very tragic situation, so obviously it makes you a little reluctant going forward when it comes to your old low life. But you even have Birdo calling him out, like, why did you push Sam away like that? She's the best thing to have in your life. So part of me was wondering, like, was he doing that, like, to protect her? But it's like, no, it was just because he was mad. He was just so caught up in all he could see, you know, was red. All he could see was revenge. And then that was kind of the whole point to kind of feed into it. And especially it doesn't help the fact is that Eddie attacked Carl too before he was taken away so it's like that definitely doesn't look well for him because it turns out that this was all about setting Eddie up um you kind of had that feeling like as things were kind of progressing so it's like uh things being what they are it's just kind of like everything's kind of open-ended and done potentially so it's like uh you, you know you didn't know for sure so but uh Deacon called him to let him know like you know because how did he do, I, I mean to be fair I guess like Either, I mean, he has the resources, so he probably got a car that's very similar to Eddie's and, like, put, like, a fake license plate on it saying that it's Eddie's car when, in fact, it wasn't. I mean, the fact is, we don't personally know where Eddie was, but we know he wasn't the one behind it. I mean, obviously, like, we didn't need to see that scene to know it wasn't Eddie. Because, yeah, Eddie can lose himself, and, yeah, he crossed the line in a lot this episode doing what he did, attacking Carl, but he has yet to actually cross that line because he's actually a really good guy. So you can't blame him from getting very emotional in the situation, but that ultimately plays a role in this whole roller coaster of an episode too. It's like, where do we go from here between him and Sam? Because Sam's been offered this leading role, and it would it'll be what could potentially you know uh, put her career back on the map and stuff like that. But she likes working with Eddie, but it's like she can't do both. So it's like, where do we go from here? And Eddie was kind of suggesting she took the job because it's like it's a great opportunity, but you know what happens? In, like it's not even just the job situation; it's also them because what works in their relationship is the fact is that they work together and things would probably get even more like things are already complicated as is awkward and weird but it's like it's good but it'd probably get more complicated if she's off working like you know like she's his partner and it's just kind of like they're this duo they're this team and it's like besides that like going on without her because it's like she's become such an integral part of his life of just everyone's life you know of monica of Berto, of this whole team you know so i the whole situation didn't go down exactly the way i thought it would necessarily like i knew she would be kind of left a choice but i thought that'd be kind of like the big end all for the season turn not not it's just like one of many things and that is the big question going forward obviously we see at the end eddie gets arrested but it's like that case going forward then there's the whole situation with um what sam is going to do i'd assume going forward sam would probably push off the job until she can help eddie clear his name and probably when it's all said and done i'll probably get the feeling like eddie would be like yeah take the job like i don't want you around me like he, he might intentionally going forward push her away just because he, it like if she's in close fix uh, um vicinity to him, then she can get caught up in all this because it's not just Eddie Deacon plans on destroying it, Sam. But that kind of begs the question too. Like he'd still go after Sam regardless. He'd find some means. I mean, to be fair, he also has kept an eye on her because he knows Sam got offered a new position and stuff like that. So because that became the question of like, well, how did they know specifically? Like, oh, how do you know where Jessup would be, or how do you know where Marnie would be? It's because like. The assassin in particular is very good at his job. It does make you wonder, like, how much was he in the know about what was going to happen? I mean, because it was shown, like, obviously he was tortured and then shot. It was meant to look like it was Eddie who did it anyway, but it's like, I doubt he was all keen on the idea. It was probably done behind his back because, you know, it, it kind of shows you how Deacon is. So I'm curious to see will my Deacon's sister, Evelyn, kind of flow at any point in time into the story going forward potentially because it's like, well, you did kind of play a role in all of this. I doubt Emily will. Like, both, like, Emily Rose, but also her playing, you know, the character Emily, just because it's, like, this is part of that, I mean, maybe in some small sense, but I doubt it'd come back in a big way. Uh, I mean, I'd love any excuse to see Emily Rose pop up in the show more often than not, but it probably wouldn't happen, but still. Crazy, crazy way to kind of end off the season with all that, like... Because I, I thought at the very least maybe we kind of have something big kind of like close out the season, sure, but and end off on like the Sam situation being a cliffhanger, like what she decides to ultimately do. 
Um, so, but to have both things, like, obviously the big, big thing is the whole Deacon thing. Like, I, I, I guess on some level, there's part of my brain that was thinking, like, oh, yeah, that'd be kind of like the cliffhanger for this season. And, well, in the sense of, like, that'd be the climax of the season, I meant to say. But I didn't realize it was ultimately going to be the cliffhanger. So, reluctantly, you even have Chris being there, having to be the one to arrest Eddie, even though she knows Eddie most likely didn't do it. But it's just like, like I said, everything was set up to put him in a position where it'd be like, oh, yeah, Eddie most definitely potentially could have done it. So... Um, at the time of recording this, I do not know if this is getting renewed for a second season. I really hope so, because I'd love to see this. Like, you know, uh, what they do with the second season with this whole Eddie and Sam situation going forward, but also how they would handle this Deacon situation, you know? We will ultimately just have to wait and see, but like I said, I'm very hopeful. I'm be so curious to see what they'd do with the season two, especially because also because this would kind of feel that hole in my heart from Castle, especially just because, uh, without really going too much into it, like, I have this whole weird situation when it comes to show Castle. I can't, I have not subsequently watched any episodes of it because of its ending and just everything kind of associated with the show all, you know, it, like I said, it's not worth really getting into. So I'd really be nice to kind of have, like, something to permanently kind of replace that show in my heart, and I think the show could really be that replacement. But like I said, I hope it comes back for a second season because I'd love to see, you know, what cases they take on, and like I said, in particular, where the stories would take us going forward. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting because, like, you know, especially maybe going forward, they'd probably balance it even more, like the whole, like, Sam's acting career and stuff like that. She might ha have a little period of time where she's able to kind of balance it too, but then eventually it might get to the point where she would ultimately have to choose, but that might be something they immediately answer first right off the bat. But like I said, we'll just have to wait and see. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.